and on today's show, how to optimize Social Security benefits for survivors and those who have been divorced. Part four of this week's series on managing Social Security benefits, America's number one retirement plan, with nationally recognized author, platform speaker, and retirement expert, Tom Hagna. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and contributing author to Innsmark, Live Specs, and Backroom Technician. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Steve. Great to be back. Well, here we are, day four, and we're talking about some nuances. Hey, yesterday I thought we were talking about, we were in the weeds there for a little bit yeah. on this new restricted claim. I love that idea. Yeah. But now we're talking about survivorship benefits and benefits for those who have went through divorce. Yes. That is so odd. And, One, and so these are strategies that all kinds of people can can uh, can relate to. So let's take a look at, at the survivor benefits. So we've got Becky, who's age 60. Her husband passed away this year when he was age 66 with a $2,400 benefit. So his Social Security benefit was $2,400. He was age 66, full retirement age. He passed away. Becky's going to live to age 92. Now, Becky's got some options, hmm. but Becky doesn't know she's got some options. And most of the advisors doesn't, don't know that Becky's got some options. So let's take mm -hmm. a look. The first option is Becky could get her survivor benefit, which is she's age 60. Now, remember... You can normally only take Social Security when you're 62, but survivors can take it as early as age 60. Mm -hmm. So if she takes 60, she gets a reduced. Remember, his 2400 mm -hmm. it gets reduced because she's taking it early. And she could do that, and that's one option. Another option is she could start taking her benefit at age 62, and then at age 66, switch to the survivor benefit, which is $2,400 a month. So that's another option. But really, the maximum way to, that she should do it is she could take... The survivor benefit at age 60, 17, 16, let her benefit increase to age 70, and at age 70, she gets 2640 a month. Now, Steve, this is going to be pretty amazing, but let me show you. Mm. Option one, where she takes the survivor benefit only, which I would tell you about 99% of all the survivors, all right. that's, they don't know they can do any different. Mm. They take the survivor benefit. That's what Social Security told them. It's going to pay about 658000 If she were to take hers and then switch to the higher uh survivor benefit, it would pay a total of 820000 But mm. look at this. What if she took that survivor benefit at age 60, she gets two extra years, and then waited to take hers max one at age 70? It's going to pay 902000 Now, Steve, this was the same lady, the same options. She didn't know she had options, mm -hmm. but this is hundreds of thousands of dollars of difference just by knowing that these options exist. And, and this number isn't a really uh, an earmark of a very wealthy or an affluent American. This is average Joe. Pretty blonde. average. Yeah. yeah. So, so when I look at something like this, I'm looking at the difference between the low end, which is 99% of everybody. There's a whole 300,000 plus yeah. that they're not tapping into. Now, again, we can't go on the Social Security system. It's not going to sit there at socialsecurity.gov and tell me, hey, this is what you should do. But this is the kind of thing, again, that I want to exhort our advisors. You could know this and you say, Steve, I'm always trying to do stuff, especially legacy planning. And everybody goes, I can't find money for it. Well, there's 300K. A right. quarter million right there. Right, that's so, a big yeah. difference. And and see, people think Social Security is so complicated. The reason I can know so much about it is it's not that complicated. There are three key benefits you need to know. You need to know your own benefit, you need to know the survivor benefit, and you need to know the spousal benefit. If you know your own benefit, survivor benefit, spousal benefit, that will fit about 90-something percent of the cases. There's some other things, windfall provisions and everything mm -hmm. for certain jobs. and and But for most people, if you know your own benefit, the spousal, the survivor, it's going to help you. Now, let's talk about... People, oh, survivor spouse, here's the deal. You can collect benefits or as early as age 60, not 62 for survivors. Mm -hmm. Benefits uh, can be re will be reduced if received before full retirement age. Exceptions for widows or widowers with children who are under 16, all right? The survivor can switch to his or her own benefits. You can switch from one to the other or the other to the other. You can't go back and forth, but you can pick mm -hmm. one and then move to the other, whichever works best for you. Now, a lot of people don't know that if you were married for at least 10 years, you can collect on mm -hmm. your ex, all right? So here are the rules. Um, this strategy of restricting your claim to spousal benefits can also apply to people who are divorced as well. To be able to claim on your ex, you must have been married for at least 10 years, divorced for at least two years, and you must not currently be married. Your, your, your ex can be married, but you can't, okay? You can collect benefits as early as age 62. And you don't, the spouse, the, the, the working spouse doesn't have to file for benefits. Mm -hmm. They just have to be eligible for benefits for you to collect, all right? Collecting 
uh, benefits on your ex will have no impact on the benefits that his or her or current or future or former spouses will receive. And if you wait till your normal retirement age, age 66, you can also restrict your benefits to spousal benefits only. So just like the file and suspend mm -hmm. or the restricted claim, you can do that if you're divorced. So you could start taking spousal benefits early and then let yours grow, or you could take yours early and let the spousal. Uh, benefit, now, but the spousal benefit, remember, does not grow past age 66. Now these are huge ideas that we can really bring to the marketplace again. I don't. I think this is a little known law, and right. I just found out about this about three years ago. So most of the advisors, when I see you present this, and I was in one of your seminars where you presented, right. nobody knew this law. So I think it's really behooving you to really understand this. And again, that's why Tommy's offering his deck. If you want to use this as a great retirement tool for seminars, because people love to talk about this, this is something that you really need to do. We come back from the break. We're going to continue more. Some of these great maximizing and optimizing ideas and some little known tricks for Social Security right after the break. It's not how much money you make for your clients. It's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv. Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, we're with retirement expert Tom Hagner. We're talking about how to optimize, how to maximize Social Security. We talked about this whole issue of being divorced. Now, I have met people that have been multiply married and multiple divorce. What's the rules on that? Do they get to cherry pick who they well, get? Or, that, you know? that, that's a great question. And, and what's funny is I was doing a, a, a meeting, and this is a true story. There was an agent who stood up and she said, I've been married three times for, for 10 years, and I'm not married anymore. What, what's my situation? Well, you get to pick. You can huh. pick whichever one is best for you. All right? So that's, that's one case. Here's another thing. Johnny Carson was married to three different women for 10 years. All right? They got divorced and, and none of them remarried. They are all collecting his survivor benefit. Each all one three is coll are collecting his survivor benefit. Unbelievable. I'm sure the intent of the law when it was written <laughs> wasn't really there to accommodate that kind of polygamy. <laughs> right. So, so let's just kind of review this, Steve. So the, again, you gotta be you gotta be married for um, for at least ten years, mm -hmm. divorced for at least two, sure. and not remarried. The ex can be remarried. All right. Okay. You can collect benefits as early as age sixty-two. All right. Um, and the spouse just has to be eligible. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to be collecting. They don't have to file and suspend. No, there's no notification collect. to the ex-spouse. This has nothing. No. They're, they're out of it. They're out of it. Okay. And and uh, it'll have no impact on that spouse's benefits at all. Mm -hmm. you, if you wait until your normal retirement age, you can also restrict your benefits and you can just pick one. You can either pick spousal or you can use your own and you can mm -hmm. switch whatever's best for you. Uh, and you widows can, as we said in the survivor, can collect as early as age 60, but it will be reduced. Mm. And... Unlike married couples who must wait for one spouse to file and suspend in order to trigger spouse benefits, an ex-spouse is allowed to claim benefits just based on their ex's record. The ex does not have to claim. So Wow. That, that to me is a huge, huge option. If I was going to market on the internet, especially maybe human services for a company, if I was doing B2C marketing on LinkedIn, this would be maybe my billboard advertisement, how to play with with in getting your ex's money for social security i think that'd yeah. be a huge idea well 50 percent are divorced yeah and then think of the survivor benefit as well mm -hmm. well let's just to make sure because i don't want to leave this segment we talked about the ex i want you to review the again the summary statement that you have on survivors yeah. benefits because i think that's where we kind of get lost sometimes okay so survivor benefits you can claim as early as age 60 all right they'll be reduced if you claim it before your full retirement age and the exception are is if there's children involved under the age of 16. the survivor can switch to his his or her own benefits. So you can either start with your survivor benefit mm -hmm. and switch to your own, or you can start with your own and switch to survivor benefit. And we showed you in that slide um, that the difference can be mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars just by knowing this basic information. Now, I know there's calculators out on the web yes. and some on behind uh, behind firewalls and certain people's websites. They'll actually calculate this for you. Yes. So all you need to know is, do you know your numbers? You said the three things. You, repeat them again so we're yeah. all there. Your own benefit, your spousal benefit, and survivor benefit. Those are the key numbers. Once you know those three cold for mom and dad or whoever yeah. the married couple is or maybe unconventional. Now, it's true. I, I think I just, we just did a show on special uh, people groups. Women was one right. and LGBT was another. Right. And we said 
with the states that have adopted, right? They're not doing DOMA anymore. Right. Then all of a sudden, there's a whole new area. And how many people know that they can have these yeah. benefits? Many people don't know. And so just by knowing, again, it, it sounds complicated. It really isn't. When you mm -hmm. know your own benefit, your spouse benefit, survivor benefit, those are the three key benefits. Again, if you want to go ahead and order any of this from Tom, whether you want the full deck or you're using an iPad presentation, this is really a great presentation. You should have it right there. And I think this is where you need to go. If you're always saying, see, I'm in retirement, but I just really don't know how to pull people at a seminar or presentation, this could be the way to go. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just go out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you tomorrow.